full of stars that shine from afar on days when it's hard. And always, Nana knows how to sing and soothe the soul from summer to fall. guitar today we're doing we are by john batiste this is a newly released album uh, of the same name it just won album of the year at the grammys truly incredible uh the album uh received eight nominations and he and john batiste won four awards just on this album alone not to mention his his uh involvement in the movie soul with trent reznor so um john batiste uh, truly amazing musician. Of course, he's the uh, he's the house band of um, Stephen Colbert, right? Late night, but just a, a, a amazing jazz pianist and songwriter. This album is kind of a departure from him uh, in terms of he usually just does more jazz, and this is sort of an R and B soul album. Had a little fun with the looper on this, so I'm going to break down what I did. So for Music Theory Monday. Uh, we'll talk about the theory a little bit and what's going on with the chords. There's only three chords. But also we'll talk about how you can construct um, parts of a song using a looper and have fun with it and sort of understand how music is working a lot of times in a, in a studio recording. The one guitar part that's happening um, is, is just this, really. So I'm going to teach you that. It's just so, such a great part. Um, a lot of times with R&B, R &B, soul, and funk, we want to create space. I'm in an I'm in an R&B funk band, and uh, you know a lot of my playing is rhythm and little little um, rhythmic elements here and there. Not too busy, not too many notes, and uh, nothing holding out a long time usually. So that's really important to work on because uh, we don't always want to just be you know blasting our guitar chords out there letting them hang out forever because that can take up a lot of space in the sonic spectrum, right? So, uh, this is a 16th note groove. One E and uh, one E and uh, right? And then nothing the third time and then back. So the string pattern would be down, up, but perhaps more importantly it's one E and uh, one E and uh, and, and it's muted as soon as I hit it. Right, so I'm I'm barely lifting the left hand. Down, up, down, up. Instead of down, up, right, that would be way different. So, uh, good thing to work on, especially in this kind of style. John Batiste um, is playing piano on this, and he's holding some chords down. And the and the second half of, of the B flat, he goes to a B flat seven. Sometimes he even goes to a B uh, a B flat seven flat nine. Okay. John Batiste is a brilliant jazz musician, so that would be a jazz chord, and it's uh, 
something where you can create tension to resolve up a fourth, which is what we're doing for the E flat minor chord. So B flat minor triad, here's like the G shape of B flat. Then you go to a flat seven, which is gonna be here. We'll zoom in and I'll, I'll show you even more clearly in a sec. Then E flat minor, okay? That's the four minor chord. So now we're using modal mixture, which is common uh, for, for R&B and soul. We're play, basically playing a chord from the, the B flat minor key, then, then G flat major. Again, uh, the flat six chord for B flat minor, okay? Then resolves back to one. The bass line's going like, right, over each root. That was B flat, E flat, G flat. So the whole loop eventually sounded like this. Well, first of all, before I play it, I decided to uh, loop the uh, what the choir is doing. Uh, John featured um, the St. Augustine High School 100 marching band, which is a very famous marching band that's played for U.S. presidents and the Super Bowl for the Mardi Gras parade. It's John Batiste's alma mater in New Orleans. And then he also featured uh, a, a gospel um, youth choir as well. So all that's going on. So I looped a three-part harmony. So the whole thing with, with the guitar part, John's piano part, the bass line, and the three-part harmony sounds like this. Right. Of course, it sounds better with actual voices, but kind of cool to try it on guitar. And then I just did a solo over it. In, in honor of John Batiste, I, I kind of did a little more of a jazzy solo than normal, um, really taking advantage of that B flat seven flat nine, uh, you know. We'll zoom in and I'll teach you the exact guitar part as well as sort of the voices, voicings I was using for the piano part. Uh, remember to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and check out the tab on the Patreon. And I really appreciate it. Let's zoom in. All right, so there's only three chords to learn. And we're going to start with the guitar part. First off, in the intro, uh, there's the highest note on the guitar here, at least on my guitar. That would be, let's see, 15, 17, 19, 20 second fret. It's a high D up an octave from there. So you could throw that in, it slides down. Kind of a funny little uh, guitar part there on the intro. Then we have this main part here, which repeats actually throughout the entire song. So you could just play this guitar part uh, uh, throughout the song. And it's a good actu actual study in how you can play three chords in one area of the neck with the same four strings. So let me, let me break that down. So you have a B-flat major. Imagine a B-flat bar chord without the two bass strings, just the first four strings, okay? And you're going to hit down, up, down, up. But the, after a down, you mute, and then you could either go up, down, muting, or just avoid the strings altogether, and then you go up again, and then mute immediately, okay? So that would be down, up, down, up. So maybe a good exercise is just to mute the strings and just go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and then add your B flat here, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. That's the part. Okay. Now it does um, four measures of B flat, but the third measure is nothing on the guitar. So you would do the first two measures, rest for the third bar, play the fourth measure. So it would be like this, three, four. Second time, third time rest, fourth time. And then you don't have to hit the strings every time. You could just avoid it as well um, when you're muting. Then we'll do E flat minor. Now. Imagine an E flat minor chord, but without the fifth string. So just the first four strings, okay? And we're gonna go the same exact pattern. Uh, down, up, down, up, right? Twice. Then it goes to G flat as far as the bass and the piano, but the guitar just waits, again, on the third bar, just like on the B flat, all right? So then you wait, and then the fourth bar of this phrase, you do G flat major. Now this may not look like G flat major, okay? It's uh, you know, it's it's eight, six, seven, six on the first four strings. But the reason it's G flat major is because it's the C shape. 
Okay, here's a G flat major you'll recognize, as well as this. These are the two bar chords, car chords that we play. But this actually is G flat major here. All right, that would be uh, once again eight six seven six, and you're just going to go same pattern down up. up. Okay, so let's do the entire uh, eight bar phrase here, which is actually the guitar part throughout the entire song. Ready? Three, four. Rest. E flat minor. Rest, get your G flat ready. Again. Mm. And a here. Rest. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. So for the piano part, so that's that's pretty much the the guitar part for the entire song. For the piano part, um, I went ahead and gave my best my best guess as to where these piano chords are being played. He's changing it throughout the song, so don't hold me to it too too strictly here. But we're gonna do uh, fifth fret, third fret, third fret, third fret. Okay, on the fifth through second strings, and he kind of just lays it down. And then for two bars, and then for the third and fourth bar, he adds a flat seven. So we can do that here with the pinky on the sixth fret, fourth string, all right? Then an E flat minor. And it's kind of a, a lot to, to, to hold an E flat root. So we're just gonna go uh, four, three, four on the fourth through second strings. That's an E flat minor triad, okay? It's part of the C minor shape. And then G flat, so then uh, G flat would be just like the bar chord of a G flat major, but the first four strings. So that's four, three, two, two. So let's do that. Ready? Four. Up. Oh, sorry. Three, four. E flat minor. Okay. Bonus round. If you want to add, if you want to add a nice jazzy chord here, you could go. B flat major, and then he the B flat seven. Then he adds maybe sometimes once in a while a flat nine. So that would be fourth fret, third string instead of third fret. You would just go fourth string. Uh, so fourth fret. So that would be four, uh, flat nine to E flat minor, G flat. Okay. The bass line is just here. So it'll be. One E and a two E and a three and a four. You know. Repeat. Same thing on the E flat. G flat. Okay. For the for the melody, that's that's sung by the by the kids and John, but it would be you know, well, eighteenth fret, sixteen, fourteen, thirteen. Okay. We are the chosen ones. We are, we are, we are, we are the go. Harmony just stays here on 13 the whole time. 11. 10. Third part, 10. I went to 7. I don't think they're doing that, but it's kind of cool. Down to 6. Stay there. And so the whole, the whole thing would would work more or less if you did those parts. That's what I did on the loop. Um, okay, so that's the song, um, three chords, but you can get so much mileage out of three chords, as I'm sure you're aware, with just a, a little bit of arranging and, and clever uh, part writing and orchestration, etc. Okay, so have fun with this, um, enjoy, and you know, if you wanna just keep it simple, just do that the entire song. You don't need to go crazy with the loop necessarily. All right, enjoy.